God and welcome to this final segment for this week of Daily Manor. We've made it to another Saturday and I'm grateful and thankful that you have taken this time to journey with me as we studied through 1 Corinthians chapter 6 as well as through chapter number 7. It's been a joy to be both teacher and presenter as we study the Word of God. As you can also tell, I started uh, this week off with Tori, but Tori didn't want to hang with me, and yet we thank and praise God for just being the granddaddy who's enjoying the grandchild. Uh, we're inside of 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, we have verse number 12, and the Bible says, to the rest I say this, and he says it is, uh, if any, I not the Lord, uh, if any brother has a wife who is not a believer, and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. That's what God's word says. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he's willing to live with her, she must not divorce him for the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children will be unclean as if it was they are holy. My, 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 my. I, I just really value that particular text. Now keep looking at what God's word continues to say in verse 15. But if the unbeliever leaves, let him do so. A believing man or woman is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? I, I have always enjoyed this particular sex storyline and how Paul is writing it because there are there was an understood that there were people who may have been in the body of Christ who were connecting to attracted to drawn to persons that were not believers and ultimately um, one had to make some determinations as to how this looks and how this works um, there's even the, the, the mindset that there were persons who married who at one time were both unbelievers and then somebody became a believer in the family. And just because you're now a believer and your spouse is still an unbeliever, it does not mean that you ought to walk away from your spouse because they do not uh, follow your teachings uh, as you come to know them through Jesus Christ. That's, that's what's happening, and that started happening in Corinth. And so Paul argues it and says, no, that's not the assignment. The assignment is to see how your witness can ultimately be a blessing to the house. It's a blessing to the house by way of the children because the children are going to be exposed to the word of God. That's number one. The children are going to be exposed. The seed that comes forth from the loins of these two people, one saved, one unsaved, that child is going to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. And because they hear about the child, because the child hears about the Lord Jesus Christ, the child then has the potential and the possibility of coming to know God in the free pardon of their sins. Something that would have never happened if one of the persons were not saved initially. I, I, that's what he's saying. And at the same time, number two, the person that can be saved is your spouse because of how you have lived and how you've carried yourself and how you have been an effective witness. They can see, sense, and know that you are saved, not primary, but you are saved for real. <laughs> and based on that, that person in that house has been redeemed and rescued because of your witness. Um, I've passed it long enough that I've had a chance to be around some family members, um, husband and wives, uh, where one of the spouses were not saved. And I've had a chance to counsel them. And I've watched in so many cases that the spouse uh, who lived the life of Christ in front of their spouse 
was able to draw their spouse to church and draw their spouse to the Lord Jesus. It has been a rarity because there have been some occasions in which it has not happened. But the spouses were able to live peaceably together. And in some cases, they ended up getting a divorce. I say that because it is not, well, Paul is not leaning towards, he's not saying that the only people who go make it are people who are quote unquote married and saved. Rather, he opens the door to show us that even the unmarried can find themselves making it into the kingdom and even the unsaved who's married to the saved can make it in because the union is still serious. The two will become one flesh and that the God that's working in you, the belief and the hope is going to work in them. The emotional, the mental and spiritual connections that are developed can enhance and be a blessing to the person that you're with. I love Paul as he writes through this and takes his time to slowly argue the, the concept. And I want you to begin evaluating what you de de desire for your own life and what you desire for your own family and what you can see the possibilities being. Because the scripture is screaming at us for us to see that there's no need for us to fuss and fight about this. If we're going to be married, we're going to be married. If we're not, let's go our separate ways because according to what Paul says, God has called us to live in peace. And since God's called us to live in peace, I'd rather for to live in peace than to be in a situation where I'm fussing, complaining, arguing, disappointed, and throwing stuff and all that craziness. Don't need none of that. God's called us to live in peace. And if we cannot peacefully get along, then one of us need to get, get on. <laughs> we need to get on. We need to find ourselves departing and, and disappearing. Ultimately, the children of God, what Paul is arguing, conveying to us, makes good human sense. Divinely inspired. That God wants us to be united. And united, whether it's the believer or the unbelievers, whoever your spouse is. But so live the life of God in front of them that they can be converted and your children born can experience the salvation offered through the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust me, it's an honor and a privilege to be with you, an honor and privilege to have shared this week's segment. Don't forget that tomorrow we do have church. In-person service is at 7.30 uh, at the main location. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. We do have the 930 virtual service that takes place via Facebook Live and YouTube. And then we also have the uh, virtual experience that is, takes place on Water from Waterford Lakes, our east side location. And that platform is via through Zoom, as well as we have also uh, an in-person service at the Waterford Lakes Elementary School there uh, in, for our east side location. And then right here at 11 o'clock, we have our final in-person service uh, that is, takes place on Sunday. It's an honor to have had an opportunity to share with you and to walk with you this week through God's word. I may be out of time, but I'm never out of word. I love you and I thank you for your time. And until we're blessed to get together on Monday, God bless. Them.